All right, now we would ask you to indulge us for a moment. We want to tell you a story, and it's got a few twists and turns. The central character, a 63-year-old high school football coach with a history of transgressions, both personal and professional. But now he's drawn the Alabama and Georgia football programs into a thicket swarming with allegations of impropriety, all stemming from a secret recording. The coach, Rush Probst, is a character straight out of a Carl Hyacin novel or Friday Night Lights. Run, pound it, be athletic, run, run, run. You get after their ass like it ain't no tomorrow. You might already have some familiarity with Probst. Back in 2006, he was the coach at powerhouse Hoover High School in Alabama. And the team was featured on MTV's Two Days, a landmark of the genre. A reality TV star was born. You beat the piss out of them. I'm talking about beat the piss out of them. Probst would parlay his success at Hoover, five state titles in nine seasons, into consideration from Nick Saban for an assistance job in Tuscaloosa. And while there are many things that are tolerated in college football, Probst would go too far and lose that job offer after it was revealed that he had been leading a double life, that he had been de facto husband and father to not one, but two families. What is it like having two families? You know, just no different than it is having one. So the two family things was a stumbling block, and Probst would lose his job at Hoover. I am remorseful for what I've done. I have failed you as a community. But Probst then crossed the state line into Georgia and never looked back. At Colquitt County High School, they believe in second chances. We needed a football coach that could, could win. And Probst would continue to win, but in March 2019, after 11 seasons at Colquitt, he was let go again, accused of improperly administering medication to players and for owing back taxes, an unusual exact if ever there was one. Probst denied improperly medicating his players. So where would he next take his talents? Who believes in third chances? Valdosta High, that's who. The Wildcats are to high school football what Notre Dame and USC are to the college game. An all-time force, the most wins by any program ever. 24-time Georgia State champions, six-time national champions. It would be a great job at a great program. Surely Probst wouldn't screw up this time. Aha, but now we get to the heart of the current matter. According to a man named Michael Nelson, a prominent Valdosta booster, then the executive director of the team's touchdown club, the newly hired Probst asked him for a few things. He wanted us basically to support him. He wanted $4,500 a month. Uh, he wanted us to buy him a truck. He wanted a gas card. And he wanted us to make a house payment. Okay, so there's that. And there is also this. The conversation with Probst from last May that Nelson secretly recorded, which has since been posted to YouTube. So we got to find some funny money. Funny money? And how much funny money do you think we need? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, hell, it could be 10000 first year, maybe 15000 I don't know who's coming and what they need and all that. Over the course of about 15 minutes, Probst makes clear what he thinks is required for the Wildcats to win. He says he needs funny money to pay for rent for the families of players willing to move to Valdosta to join the program. Okay, seems fair enough. But what about this? This is the part that has set off alarms in the corridors of the SEC. Do you know what Kirby's doing at Georgia right now? You know why he's taking that program the way he is? So Kirby's come down and met with the richest of the rich of southwest Georgia. It's multi-millionaires now. Listen, do you know how much money they spend on a player when they get them? Somewhere nine to hundred thousand dollars to sign. Somewhere nine to what? Nine to one hundred and fifty thousand to sign. But that's what Kirby does. Well, who did he learn that from? You. I don't know. Nick Saban. I was going to say that's going to be my next. It was three sixty thousand dollar donations given to Chubbs to stay in school. It was hundred eighty thousand dollars for him to have, for him to not go declare for the draft. Yeah. All right. The former Georgia running back Nick Chubb. He's now a star with the Cleveland Browns, and he has denied these allegations on Twitter. As for Alabama and Georgia, 
they have both declined comment. So is Rush Probst just talking? Is he just trying to impress a booster? Would it be wildly out of character for him to fib a little? Or is he, on this specific occasion anyway, acting as an agent of truth? For more, we are joined now by ESPN senior writer Mark Schlebaugh, who has been all over this story. First of all, Mark, um, what do Rush and Michael Nelson have to say about the veracity of what is communicated in these recordings? Jeremy, uh, I've been told by people close to Rush Probst that he has provided affidavits to both Alabama and Georgia in which he swore, uh, swore that he had no personal knowledge of recruiting violations by either program. Uh, Michael Nelson told me in several conversations that he didn't believe the allegations regarding the two college programs, that he felt like Rush Probst was just trying to be mm. a big shot and name drop <laughs> to convince him to give him some money. All right, but these are serious allegations, um, and it's not as if these things haven't happened before in the world of college football. So is this the kind of thing the NCAA is looking at? Is it the kind of thing federal agents or the IRS look at? We're talking about a lot of money. It is. I mean, the allegations are a considerable amount of money. Uh, we, I do know that the uh, compliance officials from both Alabama and Georgia reached out to Michael Nelson to verify that it was he and Rush Probst on that recording and that he, um, you know, that he was the one who made the recording. And as, as far as the NCA, I think it was up to Georgia or Alabama to, to self-investigate and then if there are any violations to report it to the NCA. How do people in Valdosta, where high school football is so important, where do they come down on this? You know, I think, I, th I think, you know, I think the town split 50-50. Michael Nelson has told me on a couple of occasions that he, feel like, he feels like he has half the support of the people down there and that the majority feel like he did the right thing. You know, he, he wants Valdosta to win as much as anyone, but, but wants him to do it the right way and wants a coach in there who's going to act with professionalism and morals and, and lead the kids the right way. Where does this go for Rush Probst? It's a good question. Uh, I know that the... Valdosta School Board is investigating. They've got a meeting scheduled for April 13th where they could decide his fate. The Georgia High School Association has opened an investigation uh, and the Professional Standards Committee, which oversees teaching certificates in the state of Georgia, is also deciding whether or not to turn their investigators loose to determine what happened. Mark, are you saying there is a chance he keeps his job and, and failing that gets another job? I don't know, Jeremy. I mean, you would guess not. I mean, I, I tried to reach out to, to Rush Probst. He declined comment, referred me to his attorney. I mean, on the face of it, you would say no. But then again, he got a job after what transpired at Hoover High School and then got another one after he was fired from Colquitt County High School, where he was alleged to have uh, done some improprieties. So we'll just have to stay tuned to, to see what his fate is. That's a very fair point, Mark. And for more, much more, you can find Mark's story on Rush Probst online at ESPN.com. You can also listen to Wednesday's edition of the ESPN Daily Podcast featuring Mark in conversation about Rush Probst with Pablo Torres.